Good morning everybody. Today we are going to talk about anatomy of aorta. In this brief session we will talk about origin of aorta, its parts, functions and branches. Some MCQs at the end of this session are for revision and assessment. Aorta is the largest elastic artery of our body. It distributes blood from left ventricle to whole body including heart. Aorta originates from left ventricle and terminates at the level of L4 by dividing into right and left common iliac arteries. At the beginning it is 2.5 cm in diameter but tapers towards its termination. Its elasticity converts intermittent cardiac output into continuous blood flow in peripheral vessels. Aorta is divided into ascending or each of aorta, descending thoracic aorta, and abdominal aorta. The first three parts are confined to the thoracic cavity and together form thoracic aorta. After entering the abdominal cavity, it bifurcates into right and left common iliac arteries at the level of L4. The first three parts of aorta are confined to the chest cavity. As shown in this diagram, aorta consists of ascending aorta, arch of aorta, descending thoracic aorta and abdominal aorta. Abdominal aorta divides at the level of L4 into right and left common iliac arteries. Abdominal aorta gives unpaired branches for abdominal viscera in the form of ciliac trunk, superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. It gives paired branches for paired viscera like inferior phrenic, renal, gonadal arteries. The parts of the aorta are ascending aorta, arch of aorta, descending thoracic aorta, and abdominal aorta. Now, what are the relations of ascending aorta with the great vessels? Anterior to the aorta is pulmonary trunk, in the middle lies ascending aorta, and posterior to it lies termination of superior vena cava. So, relations from anterior to posterior are in the form of letter pass P for pulmonary trunk, A for ascending aorta, and S for superior vena cava. The parts of ascending aorta are the parts of aorta are ascending aorta, arch of aorta, and descending thoracic aorta. From aortic sinuses arise coronary arteries. From arch of aorta arise right brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, and left subclavian artery. The fourth part of the aorta confined to the thoracic cavity is descending thoracic aorta. The parts of thoracic aorta are ascending aorta, which gives origin to the coronaries, arch of aorta, and descending thoracic aorta. Ascending aorta originates from upper end of the left ventricle, that is aortic vestibule, and continues as origin of the aorta at the sternal angle. Length of ascending aorta is 5 cm and it is diameter at the beginning is 3 cm. It is completely enclosed in pericardium. It lies inside the pericardium in the middle mediastinum below the level of sternal angle. If we open the aorta, there are three aortic sinuses. Two of them are coronary, that is they give origin to the coronary arteries and one of them is non-coronary. It does not give origin to any coronary artery. Right coronary sinus gives origin to the right coronary artery and left aortic sinus gives origin to the left coronary artery. The root of aorta presents three dilatations termed as aortic sinuses of Wells salva. These dilatations are just above the cusps of the aortic valve. Their positions are anterior, left posterior and right posterior. Anterior aortic sinus gives origin to the right coronary artery. Therefore, it is also named as right coronary sinus. Left posterior aortic sinus gives origin to the left coronary artery, therefore it is also referred to as left coronary sinus. Right posterior 
aortic sinus is called non-coronary sinus because no coronary artery arises from there. So branches of the ascending aorta are right coronary artery arising from right anterior aortic sinus, left coronary artery arising from left posterior aortic sinus. These arteries supply blood to heart. They differ from other arteries of the body that they fill during diastole. They represent the largest vessa vessorum of our body. Branches of arch of aorta. Arch of aorta on the right side gives right brachiocephalic trunk. On the left side, it gives left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery. The right brachiocephalic trunk divides into right common carotid artery which supplies blood to head and neck and right subclavian artery which supplies blood to upper limb. Right subclavian artery is divided by sclenius anterior muscle into three parts. First part medial or proximal to the sclenius anterior, second part lies posterior to the sclenius anterior and third part lies lateral to the sclenius anterior muscle. Ascending aorta develops from Francus arteriosus after it is partition by the superior septum. Origin of the aorta is located in the superior metastenum. The origin of aorta is a continuation of ascending aorta and begins at the level of second sternocostal joint. It arches superiorly, posteriorly and to left before leaving inferiorly. The aortic origin ends at the level of T4 vertebra that is at the level of sternal angle anteriorly. The origin is connected to the pulmonary trunk by ligamentum arteriosum in adult which is a remnant of fetal ductus arteriosus. So some features of arch of aorta are it is continuation of ascending aorta at sternal angle, it begins and terminates at the sternal angle, it connects ascending aorta and descending aorta, it arches over root of left lung, it is located in the superior mediastinum behind manebrum sternum, summit of arch reaches level of middle of manebrum. Branches originating from arch of aorta are there are three major branches arising from arch of the aorta from proximal to distal they are brachiocephalic trunk the first and the largest branch that ascends laterally to separate into the right common carotid and right subclavian arteries these arteries supply the right side of the head and neck and right upper limb left common carotid artery supplies left side of the head and neck and left subclavian artery supplies left upper limb. As shown in this diagram, the right brachiocephalic trunk divides into right common carotid and right subclavian arteries. Then there is left, then left common carotid artery originates from origin of aorta, followed by left subclavian artery. In this wet specimen, we can see right brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery originating from arch of aorta. Right subclavian artery is related to right recurrent laryngeal nerve which hugs it to enter the neck. In contrast, left recurrent laryngeal nerve after originating from left vagus is related to ductus arteriosus. So branches from the arch of aorta are brachiocephalic or in nominate artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. Occasionally, a fourth branch referred to as thyroid emma artery may originate from origin of aorta. If you go to the blood supply of the thyroid gland, it is supplied by the superior thyroid artery, which is a branch of external carotid artery, inferior thyroid artery, which is a branch of thyrocervical trunk, and occasionally by thyroid emma artery, which may arise from origin of aorta or from right brachiocephalic trunk. Now what is dysphagia lusoria? Arteria lusoria or aberrant right subclavian artery is the most common congenital origin anomaly in which right subclavian artery originates from the descending aorta distal to the subclavian at the level of ductus arteriosus. On its course towards the right atrium the apparent vessel travels retrotracheal and esophageal. So this vessel passes posterior to the esophagus. 
the prevalence of disabled vessel is very high, about 26 to 34 percent in Frank Down syndrome and other chromosomal anomalies. To explain the dysphagia lysoria, let us go to this diagram. In this figure, you will see distal origin of the arter arteria lysoria where it arises from RH of aorta distal to the subclavian artery. It passes posterior to the esophagus, thus giving compression to the esophagus leading to dysphagia. In this case, origin of arterial osoria can be proximal to the left common carotid artery. Again, in this condition, the vessel passes posterior to the esophagus leading to dysphagia. What are the branches of brachiocephalic trunk? Brachiocephalic trunk arises from RH of aorta. It arises oppo opposite the center of the manubrium, sends up backwards to the right. The brachiocephalic artery ends behind the right sternoclavicular joint by dividing into right subclavian and right common carotid arteries. Left subclavian artery is found below the clavicle. It runs upwards on the mediastinal lura and makes a crew on the left lung and enters the neck by passing behind the left sternoclavicular joint. The left subclavian artery has thoracic in addition to cervical parts. The subclavian artery arches laterally across the anterior surface of the cervical pleura onto the very first rib posterior to the sclenius muscle as shown in this diagram. Common carotid arteries. Two common carotid arteries, left and right, the main arteries, these are main, these are main arteries of head and neck. The left common carotid artery originates directly from the RH of aorta. It ascends to the back of left sternocolicular joint and enters the neck. The left common carotid artery runs upwards from left sternoclavicular joint to the upper border of lamina of thyroid cartilage. Opposite the disc between the third and fourth cervical vertebra, it divides into internal external carotid artery. What is aortic nacre? It is also called aortic knob. It is a radiological finding that represents the part, part of the thoracic aorta arching backwards over the left main bronchus and pulmonary vessels. It gives hump shape. It gives hump shaped contour of aorta seen in x-ray chest view as shown in this diagram. Aortic knuckle becomes prominent in hypertension due to underlying atherosclerosis. The shadow appears as a small bulb-like projection in the upper end of left margin of cardiac shadow. It becomes prominent in old age because of un undue folding of the arch caused by atherosclerosis. This coarctation of aorta, congen congenital narrowing of the aorta, just proximal or distal to the entrance of ductus arteriosus. Accordingly, it is named free ductal or post ductal type. It takes place because of the hyperinvolution of ductus arteriosus. As shown in this diagram, it is post ductal coarctation of the aorta, clinical features of coarctation are there is high blood pressure in the upper limbs and low blood pressure in the lower limbs. On x-ray chest there is notching of the lower borders of the ribs because of the dilatation of the engorged posterior intercostal arteries. It occurs along the inferior margin of the rib caused by pulsation of dilated intercostal arteries. It may also present as pulsating scapula. What is patent ductus arteriosus? In fetal life pulmonary trunk is connected to the Arch of aorta just distal to the origin of left subclavian artery by short wide channel termed as ductus arteriosus. It closes functionally within a week and anatomically within 4 to 12 weeks after birth of baby. The obliterated ductus arteriosus is named as ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum arteriosum is related to left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Non obliteration of the ductus arteriosus is referred to to as patent ductus arteriosus. PDA leads shunting of the blood from aorta to pulmonary trunk and pulmonary hypertension. Aneurysm of origin of aorta. The commonest site of aneurysm of thoracic aorta is bulb of the ascending aorta. The bulb of the aorta is a dilatation in the right fall of ascending aorta that is subjected to constant thrust of forceful blood current ejected from the left ventricle. 
it might compress the right atrium superior vena cava or right principal bronchus it is rupture is a serious complication leads to accumulation of the blood in the pericardial cavity descending thoracic aorta lies in the posterior mediastinum it originates at the level of lower border of t4 vertebra and terminates anterior to the lower boundary of t12 vertebra initially it begins to the left of the vertebral column but approaches to the midline as it descends it leaves the thoracic via the aortic hiatus in the diaphragm and becomes abdominal aorta branches of the descending thoracic aorta are it gives six period arteries to supply the thoracic wall and it is contentious so these arteries are named as bronchial mediastinal esophageal pericardial superior phrenic intercostal and subcostal arteries in this diagram we can see various branches of descending thoracic aorta which include bronchial esophageal intercostal superior phrenic pericardial and subcostal what is blood supply of the esophagus upper one third of esophagus is supplied by the inferior thyroid artery middle one third receives this blood supply from esophageal branches of descending thoracic aorta and lower one third of esophagus receives this blood supply through left gastric artery which is branch of abdominal aorta i want to summarize my lecture as aorta is the largest elastic artery of the body it supplies arterial blood to whole body including heart through coronaries these parts are ascending arch and descending aorta branches given in the chest are coronaries brachiocephalic left common carotid left subclavian and descending thoracic aorta abdominal aorta divides at the level of l4 into right and left common a common iliac arteries now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture you will be provided an mcq with four options you have to choose the most accurate one which of the following statements is follows about aorta it is the largest elastic artery of the body supplies blood to the whole body blood flow is intermittent d aortic sinuses give origin to coronary artery c is wrong option which of the following statements is true regarding ascending aorta which of the following statements is true regarding descending thoracic aorta it gives posterior intercostal arteries superior phrenic artery supplies under surface of the diaphragm bronchial arteries supply conducting part of the of tracheobronchial tree esophageal arteries supply middle third of esophagus b is the wrong statement in the given figure 1 2 and 3 respectively represent one represents brachiocephalic trunk two represents left common carotid artery and three represents left subclavian artery thank you for watching this video do not forget to like subscribe and share this video press on bell icon to remain updated thank you for watching